most of the patients that we have in the GEMS clinic actually know their gender, usually around the age of puberty, but a good portion of children do know as early as seemingly from the womb. Part of your kind of transition horror story here is that you have a neovagina that isn't working properly, you have mm -hmm. osteoporosis. And scoliosis. And scoliosis. After I'd been through the system, I 100% feel like a, I was part of some cruel medical and social experiment. Her bill would expand the state's definition of child abuse and neglect to include parents who do not affirm their child's gender identity or sexual orientation. When I talk about being androgenized um, to a point of no return, um, I really don't see those being fixable. You know, this, this is what happens when you give a woman testosterone. Welcome and welcome back to the show. This is Anna and you're watching Anna Speaks Out. So it's that time again. It's the month of October, which a lot of people like to refer to as spooky season. We've got Halloween at the end of the month, and a lot of people like to get into the spirit by watching horror movies. I used to like to do that myself, especially when I was a teenager, uh, but I'm not so sure how I feel about that these days, morally and everything. Um, but the question that I am asking currently is, why do we even need to go to fictional horror movies when we've got horrific events going on in real life all around us? For example, here in the United States, and I'm sure other countries as well, uh, not only is there an encouragement of and praise of uh, trans kids or, you know, children transitioning to the opposite gender at a young age, sometimes with medical intervention, but it's actively being pushed now by Planned Parenthood. And in one state, there's even someone trying to legislate that parents would be penalized for not actively affirming their children as transgender. This is horrific because making these sorts of choices at an early age can really have devastating consequences down the line, as you're gonna see from some trans adults telling their stories and to me, it's morally wrong to allow a child to make these kinds of choices when you know as an adult that they are not old enough to be doing that for themselves. Check it out. PlannedParenthood.org slash teens. Some people decide on hormones or surgeries to help their bodies match up to their gender identity or how they feel inside about themselves. A girl named Casey Miller, who's now 21 years old, began the process of gender transition when she was 16 years old. So when I talk about being too far gone, not, I don't really know what else to call it. Um, this is what I mean. This is how deep my voice is. Um, <clears throat> it's gotten deeper over time and it's settled. Um, this is what I mean by hair loss. Um, and it just keeps getting worse. It keeps thinning. It keeps receding backwards. Um, you know, and I'm not exactly sure that's coming back. Um, those are the main things when I talk about being androgenized um, to a point of no return. Um, I really don't see those being fixable. You know, this, this is what happens when you give a woman testosterone. My goodness, if anything is going to make somebody feel like unaliving themselves, knowing that they've made permanent changes to the essence of who they are, that they can never go back from and that they now regret, I imagine that that could do it. PlannedParenthood.org slash teens. Your gender identity is real. You should be the one to decide what changes you want to make to your body. I w when I was convinced I was a woman, I was like remembering how I was a kid waking up dreaming I had a vagina. <laughs> and now I'm like, I wish I could go back. I made a huge mistake, you know. But I realized I will never be able to get back my penis. And uh, it's very traumatic realization. But if some one of medical professionals said, like, I, I just feel so angry. I feel like these people didn't have my best interests. They never tackled my childhood traumas. They never dove deeper. They just assumed that was like, Ugh. they affirmed me, you know, into this, I believe in, into self-harm. That's what's so, that's what's so dangerous, right? Oh, but it's transphobic to state the fact that the vast majority of young people who decide that they are transgender feel that way because they suffered from a severe trauma as a child, right? Yeah, get out of here with that. PlannedParenthood.org slash teens. 
They're medicines you can take to delay puberty for a while. They're called puberty blockers, and they work like a stop sign by halting the hormones testosterone and estrogen that cause puberty changes like facial hair growth and periods. Puberty blockers are safe and can give you more time to figure out what feels right for you, your body, and your gender identity. There's so much damage to be done to these kids through the medications. We talked uh, about Lupron. Uh, um, so people don't know this, but Lupron, aka puberty blockers, mm -hmm. or, you know, leftists try to sort of like, you know, make the terms very vague. So they say yeah. affirming care, they <laughs> say trans, trans health care. Okay, we're gonna get specific here. Lupron is the drug that is known as puberty blockers. Yeah. They give it to children at 11 or 12 to block yep. puberty. Right. And this is also the drug that's given to pedophiles in prison to sterilize and chemically castrate. Them. That's right. People don't know this. Do you know that they did studies on this in, in Finland and in Sweden for 20 plus years and they've shut it down. Yeah, in they Europe. shut it down. In a lot of countries in Europe, they're actually rescinding That's the right. guidelines that children need to be given puberty blockers because it's having negative ramifications. Puberty blockers are safe. Um, when you transitioned, which was how many years ago? 30 years ago this month. 30 years ago. Yeah. And you told me about so many safeguards that there were mm -hmm. to ensure that this was not going to be something that you regret. That's right. And go figure, there were not a lot of G transitioners back That's then. That's right. For me, flash forward to 2015 when I transitioned. Wow. wow. A whole years are going by. Wow. Um, there was zero safeguards. That's right. I walked in to a doctor's office and 20 minutes later walked out with a prescription for estrogen and testosterone blockers. But wait, where was your mental health care? No, they didn't require it. What? I'm, no, this same is, with my surgeries. They didn't. Same with your surgeries. Yeah. Well, I had to go through such, like, you know, which they call gatekeeping, and I changed it to safekeeping. I really feel That's like it's so safekeeping. Good. What I don't want you to do is get into a space where you're like, oh my God, I just made a huge mistake. I cut my breasts off, I got a hysterectomy, I'm 20 years old, my sex drive is null and void. Like, now how are you gonna have a great life? Puberty is actually the most important thing a human being can go through. Yet your your brain grows during puberty. So now we're right. gonna dumb everyone down? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> what sane human being thinks that a person will be healthy right. mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, mm -hmm. pausing their development, mm -hmm. canceling their development really, yep. by 12. You are trapping a child in a child's mindset. That's right. And that's the kind of people we want running around. I don't think so. Well, then I start to get all weird conspiracy, dude, right? And I'm like, uh, is there like a bigger thing going on here? There, there has to be. There has to be. There's a lot of money behind it. Yeah, it sure comes across as if there could be some darker conspiracy going on behind the scenes. If I didn't know any better, I would think that maybe that was a possibility. Just like I said, scary movies happening in real life. That's right. People don't people don't understand that you're sterilizing kids. You're actually sterilizing kids. You're doing so many so much damage to a child Insane. that it just seems to me there has to be something more powerful involved here, which is what? Money. Money is always follow the money. It's an actual real thing. Yeah, but despite all of those very serious issues that were just pointed out, there is a lawmaker in Virginia who wants to control other people's children for them and wants to put the parents in jail, potentially, if they do not allow their children to make these life-altering and devastating decisions for themselves. A Democratic lawmaker in Virginia called Elizabeth Guzman is introducing a bill that will charge parents with a felony, strip them of their employment, and imprison them if they don't wholeheartedly endorse their minor children's sex changes. But I was just a traumatized kid. But they kind of like didn't protect me from myself. <laughs> There's an investigation also in place that is not only, you know, from a social worker, but there's also a police investigation before we make the decision that there is going to be a CPS charge. What could the penalties be if, you know, the investigation concludes and it's concluded that a parent is not affirming of their LGBTQ child, what could the consequences be? Well, we first have to have an investigation. You know, it could be a felony, it could be a misdemeanor, but we know that CP a CPS charge could harm, you know, your employment, could harm your education. Why do we even need to go to fictional horror movies when we've got horrific events going on in real life all around us? Thank you again so much for being here today. Since you liked the video enough to make it all the way to the end, 
Don't forget to click the thumbs up and share with somebody else who would also find it interesting. Leave your comments below and we'll all have a conversation. If you really enjoyed it, check out the description for several different ways you can support what I do here. Have a wonderful night at